welcome back to Loki's Librarian. If you are new here, welcome. This, I am your librarian, Katrina. This is where I am reading through the enormous library of books that you see behind me, and then I give you a quick synopsis and I tell you what I think about them. So if you like books, just aren't sure what to read next, hit that subscribe button, like and share my videos, and let me know what you think in the comments. Since I have decided to give my brain a break with a fiction book when we have five Sundays in a month, and since it is October, the best month of the year, I decided to revisit one of my favorite monster themed books, making this week's book of the week, Monster Hunter International by Larry Correa. Ooh, I'm getting ref reflection and glare. There we go. Now you can see it. And since I wasn't sure what thematic cocktail to mix up, I threw that question to his rabid but loyal fan base. And one of the suggestions is Cazador, which is one ounce of cherry brandy, one ounce of bourbon, two dashes of bitters. So let's do this. I first read this book off of a Kindle suggestion about a decade ago, and it came in a three-in-one bundle with the first three books in the series. And it has what is quite possibly the greatest opening paragraph in the history of fiction. Quote, on one otherwise normal Tuesday evening, I had the chance to live the American dream. I was able to throw my incompetent jackass of a boss from a 14th story window. You tell me that doesn't speak to you, right? And now, no disrespect to J.K. Rowling, there are literally millions of Harry Potter fans that have memorized the opening sentence to Sorcerer's Stone, myself included. But if you've ever held a job with a jackass boss, then that, that line speaks to you and wants to make you read more. I read that line and I immediately texted my boyfriend, now husband, that he should read this book. He'd probably like it. It was kind of right up his alley. By the time we got to the elves, I sent him a reminder text that this is one he'd want to read. I promised him that he wouldn't be disappointed. And I think he was kind of ignoring me. Um, not because he doesn't read, he does, but because my reading list is really eclectic. Um, all of those books, a lot of fiction, a lot of nonfiction, and he's his is more focused. He likes cyberpunk, dystopian fa uh, fantasy, action, anime. Urban fantasy is not really his gig, and for whatever reason, despite taking place mostly in rural locations, M MHI is classified as urban fantasy. So he was kind of ignoring me. Now, by the time I got to the orcs, I was no longer texting him. I asked him if I had ever recommended a book to him and why would he think I would steer him wrong because I know what his tastes are. I wouldn't just send him to tell him to read a book just because I liked it. I was like, you need to read this. And they said, if you don't read this, I'm going to sit on your chest and read it to you. And he kind of rolled his eyes at me, but he started reading. And by the time he hit the orcs, he asked if I had the next one in the series. And now he's a Korea super fan. Kind of found that that's how it goes. Once you can pin somebody down and make them actually read it, then they end up really liking the series and the author's writing in general. So, after throwing his boss out of a 14th floor window, the main character, Owen Zastava Pitt, is made a job offer by Monster Hunter International Corporate Headquarters in Casador, Alabama. Hence the reason for the drink. See, his boss was a werewolf, and MHI makes a mint off of bumping off the things that go bump in the night. Two dashes? Two dashes. I get three. Because the dashes are really small. Stirred. Give me a moment here. Let me stir this up. Now, despite this book having been first published 15 years ago, I don't want to necessarily give a synopsis beyond what I've already done because that might include spoilers for those who have not yet read the series. Instead, I'm going to attack some of the stupid that has attacked Larry Correa and for his absolute audacity in being guilty of wrong thing. Now, understand, he 100% does not need my defense. Uh, Larry is known online as the International Lord of Hate. Kind of a nod to one of his other characters from, I believe, well, nod to himself <laughs> in Tom Stranger. He's fully capable of fighting his own battles. But if there can be a review that was written seven years ago, which means seven years after the book came out, accusing the main character of being a Mary Sue, then I feel like I can do a new review explaining the error of that mistake. So let's start with a quick definition. Mary Sue, character archetype in fiction who is often portrayed as inexplicably competent across all domains, gifted with unique talents or powers, and unrealistically free of weaknesses or character flaws. Now, why is Owen not a Mary Sue? Well, let's start with he's been practicing with guns literally his whole life. In this particular review, and I wasn't sure if I want, I, I'm going to link it in the description. I wasn't sure if I was going to, so I'm like, do we really want to reward stupidity with visits? But, yeah, screw it. 
I'm carrying it apart. Maybe she should have a right to defend herself. So I'll include the link. But in the link, she, she complains that it reads like, quote, quote, it's been hijacked by a Gary Stu conservative libertarian government hating gun nut possessing the emotional maturity of a 14 year old boy. I will grant the book reads like libertarian revenge porn. What the hell's wrong with that? I mean, it's practically a love story to free market capitalism and the glories of private enterprise. But it also acknowledges that some pretty horrific things can happen when the free markets don't police themselves. Witness the Christmas party of 1995. If you've read the books, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't read the books, go read them and then you'll be in on the know too. So Owen was raised by a military man to be extremely comfortable around guns, like starting at seven, eight years old. I mean, anecdotes from his childhood and teenage years are peppered throughout the story explaining why he was so very good at violence and what he does. It is literally a lifetime of learning. And if you spend 15 years, 15 plus years practicing one particular skill set, you better believe you're going to be damn good at it. I gotta try this. It's a little on the sweet side. Like it probably could use a little more bitters actually. It's not bad though. It's got good flavor. It's just a little on the sweet side. That's the, that's the cherry liqueur. So the reviewer sort of poo poos the idea that Owen, who is an accountant when he defenestrates his boss, is also a cage fighter, or was rather. Apparently she missed the fact that he stopped cage fighting when he became an accountant. Guess what? This might shock people, because I know that the, the, the MMA world makes it all look really good and glitzy, but cage fighting does not actually pay the bills for the vast majority of people. Most of them have to have day jobs. And before he became an accountant, Owen supplemented his cage fighting with being a bar bouncer. Again, spend a few years doing something, you're going to become quite adept at it. In his case, violence. So nothing in there is inexplicable. It's not like he just woke up one day, picked up a gun, and was, bam, able to hit the target. He had literally 15, 20 years experience practicing that one skill set. Of course he's good with guns. Of course he's good at beating the shit out of people. That's how he supported himself throughout college. So there's that aspect of a Mary Sue, not inexplicably good. The reviewer claims that the main love interest, Julie Shackleford, only needs to be rescued less than half a dozen times. Try three. I, uh, I counted, literally counted during the book. I didn't mean to, but I just read the book. Got to refresh my memory before doing the review. I don't want to just phone it in because I read it once, once or twice before. But I reread it. Three times. Two of the three times that she was saved, Owen was saving the whole team. Not just Julie, but the whole team was being saved because he's the main character and thus the hero of the book. Because he was the hero of the book, he was in the spot to do the saving because hero. That's what heroes do, right? Heroes are the point of fiction. Unless you like to read really depressing fiction like The Tortilla Curtain, which I was forced to read in college and immediately got rid of that book when I was done with it because it was awful. The third time, Owen doesn't actually do the rescuing, and Julie's saving comes at a really high cost, which is explored later in the series. All right, it's literally, it's called foreshadowing. All right, I know that not everybody who reviews books is familiar with these terms, but it's called foreshadowing, and he does it very well. Because you don't have to necessarily have read MHI, to understand what's going on when we get to what happened with Julie and her, her last saving in the final climactic battle, but it'll help. So also she, Julie saves his ass at least that many times. And at least that many times she, she pulls his ass out of the fire. So anyway, th this reviewer is a dumbass. Really. I feel like the reviewer either didn't actually read the whole book, which is quite possible since Larry Haters have already published one star reviews for his upcoming book in defense of the second amendment, which is interesting since the book hasn't even been published yet. So how can you review a book that hasn't even been published? I don't know. Somehow they managed it, at least in their own deluded little minds. How can you pretend like you have any ethics at all if you're doing that? Like seriously, as for not having any weaknesses, do you know how many times Owen gets his ass handed to him in the book? He spends half the book like bloody and bleeding. Seriously, he gets the shit kicked out of him by a whole host of creatures. I mean, yes, he won against the werewolf in the beginning, but he ended up hospitalized and scarred. It's not like he just happened to have silver bullets in his gun. He got the shit kicked out of him by that werewolf. 
He's almost killed by whites, vampires, federal agents, cursed evil, and Cthulhu. I mean, it, it's... He isn't killed because he's the hero. You have to have a main character in a fiction book to keep the story interesting. Um, and no character flaws. Let's see here. How about Rage? All right. I mean, there's, what, Seven Deadly Sins? I believe Wrath is, is one of them. His rage almost costs him everything. Several times, he almost loses everything. But because he's not a one-dimensional Mary Sue and capable of learning from past mistakes, he recalls all that he's learned over his hero's arc and pulls back from the brink. That's, that's called character growth. That's not a Mary Sue, that's character growth. Which is what everybody should have, both in fiction and in reality. The reviewer says there are plot holes all through the story, but really there aren't. Because I, 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 the first time I read it, I was kind of reading fast, and so I, I did think, okay, maybe there's some, there's maybe a little bit of deus ex machina. And so I was really watching for that when I read it through this time, so that if there was, I could be like, hmm, okay, maybe she's got a point. But again, if you're paying attention, everything in the climax of the book is foreshadowed throughout the course of the entire book everything. It neatly closes all loopholes. It, everything. It brings it full circle. Uh, seriously, libertarian revenge porn is not everybody's cup of tea, but is honesty in a review too much to ask for? So what else have Larry Hader said about Ilo? These racist and misogynistic. Now, this has nothing to do with his reviewer. This is just things I've heard in general. Those are the big ones, that he's a racist misogynist. Um, Except that Owen's friend, best friend in the book is a fellow newbie named John Jeremiah Jones, a.k.a. Tripp. He's a teacher of Jamaican descent. We all know how many white people there are in Jamaica. His fellow team members are Holly Newcastle, a former nursing student slash stripper, and Albert Lee, a librarian of Asian descent. At one point in the book, Holly refers to their team as, quote, the Rainbow Coalition, since we had one white female and males of the black, Asian, and other categories. All we needed was a lesbian and a guy in a wheelchair, and we were ready to solve even the biggest liberal's angst. End quote. What they need is Blair White. This whole time, I thought I was a white woman. I'm a black man. Because clearly, Ilo has fallen out of liberal angst regardless. Okay, one more bit of political stupidity that I just wanted to throw out there. Uh, in this review it has to do with orcs and elves. A few years ago, D&D fandom was all a dither over the bizarre belief that the fantasy characters orcs and elves were apparently stand-ins politically for black versus white, with orcs being black people you can slaughter wholesale without remorse, while elves were universally good and the symbol of purity and whiteness. God. This idiocy started in 2020, at least that's the first time I heard of it, the first time my husband brought it to my attention. It's apparently still gaining traction in 2022 because what the fuck else do social justice warriors have to bitch about now that their guy's in office? Now, I, for one, believe that fantasy is exactly that. Much like people, orcs and elves can be good or bad depending on their individual choices. Here again, Ilo was ahead of the curve. Elves are the equivalent of trailer trash. And orcs are badass warriors who fight on the side of good. So if you are your average NPC SJW who refuses to read a Larry book because gun nut bad, consider this. Larry does not consider orcs, or black people for that matter, to be dangerous, scary, or worthy of defenestration. They are allies in the ongoing fight against evil. Despite what the politically correct world would have you think, actions actually do speak louder than words, and Larry acts by making a rainbow coalition of highly competent warriors that cover the spectrum. Minus Blair White. More's the pity. Seriously, this is just a fun read. It's one of my favorite books. The action moves fast. The story ties together neatly at the end with just enough setup for the next one in the series. I, I do get that not everybody enjoys action writing or even just writing where instead of waiting for the bad things to happen and then moaning about it, the hero of the story takes a more proactive stance. On the flip side, I mean, not everyone is a fainting damsel in distress. Some people are very proactive about their own survival. And those people work for Monster Hunter International. That's it for this week, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I will see you all later. Bye.